Thank you, thank you. As she said, I'm Josh Greenwald. Let me get a little closer. Hi. Long time no speak. Um, I'm here to talk about the quest to per for perpetual motion, and uh, it, the night is hoax, so let's think about that. The, uh, this is John Ernst Worrell Keeley, and the Keeley motor behind him. Um, the, uh, it's 1872. He has a patent for a, uh, a motion machine, some sort of in, uh, engine that makes massive amounts of power from like a little bit of water. Uh, he, uh, so 1872, he gets $10,000 to go, go ahead and build the machine. And then after he gets the $10,000 to build the machine, he actually like starts building the machine and doing, doing talks. And he uh, had talk, um, these are great. Um, so uh, at the time, they actually believed in luminiferous ether. So there was this ether that was everywhere and it was like the fourth property of matter or kind of thing. Um, he used terms like quadruple negative harmonics in his machine, which then created the etheric disintegration of water with molecular vibration in a sympathetic equilibrium, which caused an atomic oscillation, which then set up atomic triplets which you ended up with the cyclonic strength. <laughs> so it's hydropneumatic, pulsating vacuum engine. It's hydromatic. Why, it's a greased lightning. <laughs> but seriously, it was a, a very pretty engine. So. He made a very pretty engine, and that was important, if you think about it. If you're going to get a serious amount of money out of people, you want it to look serious. You want it to be dangerous, right? So he put in a one quart of water. He would blow into a, like a tube for 30 seconds and then play a harmonica. <laughs> and it would start, right? So... At different times, he, um, he put in one quart of water in that he generated 50,000 PSI from one quart of water and some air he blew in. So the machine was making this a massive amount of force. Like 50,000 PSI, he was basically shooting planks uh, with bullets, like he set up a, a steam gun, and he was shooting bullets through planks of wood with the force of this, this engine. Uh, at different times, he played a pitch pipe to get it started. He needed something musical because he needed it to be to start an oscillation. So he needed like C or D or whatever. He needed a certain note to start the sucker. At different times, he actually played a zither to get it started. <laughs> He's like, look, I can start it with a freaking zither. Ring! So he gets a shit ton of money, and a lot of people in Philadelphia are freaking out because uh, they're like, holy crap, look how powerful this machine is. So if we look here, capital five million, if you look in the bottom, this is 10 shares, and what's the whole number of shares, 100,000. So this is 1875, people. <laughs> I'm not talking about like, oh, this is in modern day dollars. No, this is in 1875 dollars. Five million, what the f Just so much money. So he's got the Keeley motor, uh, <laughs> I like to say the motorcycle club board, but it's the, uh, <laughs> the, the motor company. These uh, all notice uh, rich white men. Uh, on the board. And there's the engine there, by the way, like there's, there's part of the engine. So, let's see. Uh, I thought I had a better one of the engine. It, it's, it's spun. And so basically, he, um, he dies. He gets pneumonia and he dies in 1898? Yeah. So, he dies and people are like stealing his machine and shit. Like, they're, they, they're, they literally try to like, well, wait, he was with our society, so we're taking the machine uh, they took the machine, and then they couldn't get the machine to work. 
and they tried all kinds of shit. Like, uh, and then even when he had the machine when he was alive, he wouldn't allow like physicists to watch it start, <laughs> or anybody that's a scientist in any way. So he's like, no, fuck those guys. They might like know what's going on. So uh, he and, and he he used that as like, oh look, it's a secret. I don't want them to figure out how I this machine works. Uh, and by the way, nobody else could start it, even when he was alive. Nobody else could get the play the tune and get it to work. So if you look on the image on the right here, there was basically a giant engine in the basement that was actually an air compressor that was uh, like a water, it's called a water motor, but it was basically using water and air to like a, like a air, um, you ever play with a water rocket when you were a kid? Yeah, like a water rocket. So he was getting a 50,000 PSI with this water rocket engine in the basement, basically. And then it went up through a secret tube. Then it went up and then through a false floor and a false wall and a false ceiling and then went to the motor. And that's why they couldn't get it started anywhere else because it was the building that allowed it to run. So why didn't this work? Well, mainly thermodynamics. <laughs> so... <laughs> Thermodynamics, I am an enthusiastic amateur, as they say. So, uh, in any isolated system, one cannot create new energy, would be the first law. That's simplified. It said energy cannot be created or destroyed, only transformed from one form to another. A perpetual motion machine, in order to do this, would have to produce work without an energy input. In this case, he added water and 50,000 psi of air. So, yeah, um, <laughs> pretty much. The, uh, the second rule, everything goes cold, which is entropy and a band with Eric Godesman in it. And how many of you guys know him? Yeah, okay, everybody. Uh, he's in every band, if, if you weren't sure. You're like, I wonder if he's in KMFDM. Yes, he's played with KMFDM. Um, yeah, exactly. Uh, okay, so uh, a perpetual motion machine uh, would have to have the energy never wasted, doesn't generate friction, no heat produced, etc. Because if it produced heat, it would it would be releasing energy into the the wild, which means it's not going to be recovered again, which means it will stop running. So friction's bad on a on a perpetual motion machine. Uh, a Newton, an object in motion tends to stay in motion unless acted upon by an unbalanced force, such as friction. So in, in most of these, I'm going to show you some modern day sort of curiosities that, that are pretty much what's going to stop them is friction at some point. Uh, the patent office just stopped taking perpetual motion <laughs> uh, machine patents. They're like, fuck you, no. Um, <laughs> You bring us a working model. You bring us a working frickin' model, and we'll believe you. Uh, so that's where it came down to. But the, and the British did the same. Um, this is Da Vinci. Oh, ye seekers after perpetual motion, how many vain chimeras or chimeras? I never, chimeras. See, you all have a different one. <laughs> Jeez. Okay. Chimera? Okay. Okay, we'll go with chimera. <laughs> Back to the beginning again. How many vain chimeras have you pursued? Go and take your place with the alchemists. 1494. Burn. Burn. <laughs> Alchemy. Burn. <laughs> like, You're not even chemistry. You, you suck. Okay. So, this would not work, right? Like, you can see this. This makes sense. You, you cannot power your notebook with its own USB port, right? So it is a battery, and there is power going on, and there's a lot of shit going on, but it's not going to work. But if you think about it, you could plug it into the notebook next to you and power that sucker. <laughs> so not totally unhelpful. Okay, so this... There we go. Kind of hypnotic. Um, da Vinci uh, did a bunch of sketches where himself was like, um, that's interesting, your, your, your perpetual motion machine, I'll sketch it. And so he sketched all kinds of ones, and, and these actually run for quite a while. If you think about it, they're kind of like kinetic batteries. You get them started, and they'll keep rolling. 
Did it start rolling? Good. Um, this is an overbalanced wheel, same thing, 1470. This one's a lot cr more creative. You see those little pie pieces? This one's like downright medieval. Uh, and if you notice what's happening is a spiral is happening. So at one point, it's narrow to the, to the center uh, of the, the, the spinning wheel. And then at a certain point, it drops to the outside and then builds up speed of centripetal force. So some of these work, by the way. They're not all bullshit. Uh, they run for quite a while. This one's super efficient. This one just keeps going for a long time. It's modern. It was made like three years ago with industrial level materials. Um, magnets. Magnets. Everyone has magnets. If you look at hoax.com or whatever, that's like, there's another perpetual motion machine. You'll never believe it. It's magnets. <laughs> so this one's an overbalanced with hammers. This one you see a lot. Hmm? Yeah, exactly. The, the, the other problem with these, these aren't really perpetual motion machines because if you try to get any work out of them, they would just stop. Any, like, the slightest bit of friction, and they'll stop. So some of them work pretty well, and then others, they're basically, like I say, like a kinetic battery. You shove it for a while, and it runs for a while. But you, can you imagine, like, just trying to hook a fan to this, like maybe even just a Chinese fan or something? Like, how are you going to get any power at all out of these at all? So there's really not much uh, to these. They're, they're like curiosities. This one kind of blows your mind for a bit. Is he there? Is he doing it? Is he doing the thing? Okay. Okay, so, real quick. Oh! How did it happen? One way valves, how did this happen? Okay. The show's called Hoax. There's a pump in the base. <laughs> So uh, what, what actually happens is if you run this, uh, the, the liquid will get to the overspout and stop because it's capillary action that's bringing it up there, and the capillary action would stop it from leaving. It would want to crawl back up that curve again. So that's actually the problem with the boil flask, and that's, that's way back to 1666. Okay, now this one... It's called the Axle Tree. This one was 2001, 2002. And this one's actually an interesting curiosity. It, I think it actually works. Like, it doesn't create any work. Like, it's just something that will look really cool on your desk. But um, this uh, is a brain teaser. What it is is those are positive magnets. Those are, uh, they're all positive, right? So let's say they're all uh, south-facing. So south-facing magnets on the end of these stalks, and those stalks run through the blue tubes, and then the entire ramp is positively charged as well. It's also south-facing. So there's no friction as far as it trying to move. And then once it gets over that little bit, that gravity then pulls it down. But this one's actually supposed to work. But uh, it would eventually, what, break down, build up friction in the, uh, the center point, and break. Speaking of breaking, this one, <laughs> this one's obviously corgi powered. Like they're not even trying. So, so like with it being corgi powered, what I'm curious about, any physicists in the room, would this run for a while by him running? Like he's generating force sort of in one direction and the, and the, it's going in the opposite direction, but he's not touching the ground at all. So he's going to be center of it's really hard to wrap your brain around it. The, the, the owner obviously pushed the merry-go-round to get it started, but would it keep running is the question. <laughs> and this one's obviously powered by, like, dog food, treats, and human love. <laughs> and then on that, the Simpsons did it. Lisa did it. She built a, <laughs> she built a perpetual motion machine. It says, I know, let's see. I know, and this perpetual motion machine she made is a joke. It just keeps going faster and faster. In this house, we obey the laws of thermodynamics. <laughs> As needed. There we go. Okay, so I was thinking about perpetual motion machines and how they're all sort of hoaxy. 
And then I was thinking, well, what if a simple machine, and then what if it's made of titanium? If it's made of titanium, titanium doesn't go anywhere. It doesn't rust. It, it seals itself in a clear layer of, of uh, uh, titanium oxide, <laughs> right? And titanium oxide is clear, so it actually makes like a clear coat on itself and then stops rusting. So things that you need to last 100,000 years, 200,000 years, titanium. That one up top, or the one on the right, that is a $1,000 titanium 18-inch crowbar. I don't know why I want it, but I really want it, like really bad. <laughs> it's $1,000. The other two, 100 bucks each, I could totally do that. See the pry bar on the bottom? That's a hundred bucks, and it's all, it's, it's beautiful. It's, it's about a foot long, and then that is a hammer. These tools, these simple machines, will still be here 100,000 years from now, unless something horrible happens to them. Um, but they're not gonna go anywhere, they're not gonna rust. Okay, so this leads us into long-term thinking. I want you to think in the long term, and making money. This is the Hammaker and Schlimmer clock. It says, 539, do you see the ball bearings? So the bottom one is the time, the, the hour, the minute, and or the yeah hour, tens, yeah, and then once, Sing, seconds. No, 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 it's 539. Well, there might be, a, I don't know. Anyway, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Hamburger Schlemmer, $9,500. How do you think it works? Anybody, anybody? It works well for $9,500, right? Uh, there's a motor in the base. You're like, oh, it looks so cool, though. Motor in the base. Okay. So, speaking of clocks and uh, motors, this thing is uh, pretty amazing. It's Cox's timepiece. So, this is into devices that are actually on the long term of thinking. So, you can't have perpetual motion if it's that impossible. You have pseudo perpetual motion. So, how about something that's just planning on lasting forever or 10,000 years? So, this is the Cox's timepiece. It was 1760s, James Cox. It's, it's claimed to be a perpetual motion machine, uh, but it's not really self contained. It's actually. Um, has, it uses barometric pressure, changes in barometric pressure to self-wind itself. And it uses a mercury barometer, right, in the middle of it. That mercury barometer contains five liters of mercury at 150 pounds. You would not be able to lift this fucking clock, basically. And ironically, it's in the Victoria and Albert Museum in London, and it's not running. It could literally run for hundreds of years, but it's not running because they probably don't want to wear it down or, or something. But it does self-wind itself. It's got gearing. It's beautiful. I want to go. Uh, Victorian Albert Museum, London. Road trip. Okay. The Long Now Clock. Do you guys know Long Now? Let me hear a woo. Okay. Long Now Clock. 10,000 year clock. They're designing a clock that's supposed to run for 10,000 years. So if you think about 10,000 years, you need to use materials that can last 10,000 years and survive water for 10,000 years, okay? So lots of titanium, quartz glass. Uh, let's see, uh, this, this clock can actually be an entire talk all on its own. Uh, this is a model and the, the real one's gonna be inside a mountain. Uh, they're cutting steps down this mountain right now with a robot. Um, the, the primary materials in it are um, marine grade 316 stainless steel, titanium, and dry running ceramic ball bearings. They're using ceramic for the ball bearings because, well, ceramic lasts for literally ever. We, we've already found clay tablets for 10,000 10, years old. The entire mechanism will be in an underground facility in West Texas. And if you're a member, by the way, you get a pr uh, you're basically on the list to be invited to go watch it run when it's done. Okay, so long time, right? 10,000 years on a clock is pretty good. But every time we go into space, I don't know if you guys know this, but we have a tag running. Uh, it's a R tag, technically. Radioisotope thermoelectric generator. It's basically a nuclear battery. It's a little generator. You have a, a nuclear pellet, and then you have a, a, a heat engine on top of it, 
right? So it, it's two dissimilar metals. And so if you heat up two dissimilar metals together, you can even wrap copper around a nail. Heat it up with a lighter, it'll generate a charge. If you apply a charge to it, it'll generate a hot side and a cold side. So that's basically how these run. This is working on heat on one side from a nuclear pellet of like polonium or plut a plutonium. And then they have fins on the outside that go to space. So they have a definite hot side from this nuclear pellet and they have a definite cold side from the coldness of space. So this is the Voyager probe. It's been running for 40 years on one of those batteries. Okay, and it still has about 20 years of battery left. And what they did is they, they've actually, it, it keeps putting out less and less heat because of the half-life of the radionuclide in it. So it starts putting out less and less power uh, as it goes. So they have to keep shutting down functions. That's how the tag works. You can see that. Radiator fins, general purpose, science, yes. Lots of pretty, like, nuclear things. Um, but yeah, we're talking, they have ones, they have some now that they actually think will run for about 2,000, 3,000 years, these, these tags, these batteries, the thermoelectric generators. So if you're really, like, excited about the whole, like, uh, perpetual motion and uh, thermodynamics, the next rabbit hole, <sighs> this is really deep, Time crystals. You guys heard of time crystals? Remember the word time crystals. Go home and Google it because it'll blow your fucking mind. It's nuts. Basically, the, the crystal vibrates in time as well as space. So it's, these are ytterbium ions that are talking to e or, or, or interacting with each other at different, they're actually leapfrogging each other and interacting with other crystals along the line. So you have no idea. It's, it's constantly out of balance. It's constantly out of equilibrium, and it's a new phase of matter. They've, they've declared it a new phase of matter, which is nuts. Um, science. science, exactly. This is Norman Yao. So when it comes to long-term thinking, I'd like to raise a toast to the future. Thank you.